the iPad Pro is finally here. I, I honestly, my UPS, ugh, my UPS delivery, it took forever. I basically, I didn't get the thing to like, I think it was like 2.30 my time. Whew, it took forever for it to get here. Well, it felt like forever at least. Um, but it's here now. In fact, I got it right here. So I have the 11 inch iPad Pro with uh, 256 gigs, space gray, which is much darker gray this time, which I'm thankful for. Um, the smart keyboard also. Um, my Apple Pencil didn't show up. Uh, nobody seems to know where that is right now. So um, I'm just going to be talking about the iPad and the keyboard right now. Unfortunately, I have no idea where the pencil is, uh, <laughs> which kind of sucks. So that that's not good. But let's move on. Um, the reason why I went with the 11 inch one is I've got, had the uh, 12 nine for the last two generations of the iPad pro. And I do like the 12 nine one. It's great. It's big. It's easy to work on. There's tons of real estate, but for me, I wanted to try something different. So I got the 11 inch one this time. I wanted to try something that I could just sit on the couch and play around with the 12 nine. In my opinion is just too big for that. Even these new ones that they just look too big. I really need to get my hands on them before I say anything too concrete. Um, but it just, the, the screen size itself, it's too big to hold one-handed while you're tapping on the screen, um, which is something you can do with the 11-inch relatively easy. I mean, unless you had really small hands, I guess that might be difficult. But for me, I've got big man hands. Holding the 11-inch one in one hand, tapping on it, not a problem. Feels great. Um, 256, I went with that size. Um, I really wanted to go with the one terabyte, but honestly, they're just really expensive. And I bought this one myself. I didn't get a review unit or anything. Um, so this is completely on me. Um, and they went up in price and honestly, I just, it wasn't in my budget at this time. Um, I probably will get the 12.9 of this generation of iPad Pro, and I might get the one terabyte of that one. Um, and the reason my thought is, is I want a hardcore video editing machine of my iPad. <laughs> and I know most of you are going to say, well, get a MacBook Pro. I don't want a MacBook Pro. I think my channel's evidence of enough. I like the iPad. I like working on the iPad. It is my device of choice, and that should be okay. I want to use my iPad, um, but I'll probably get the 12 nine in the future. I'll probably get one terabyte on that just because I think the storage wise for editing video and stuff like that, you can keep a ton of stuff on disc using apps like local storage and Luma fusion. Um, so I, I would think, I think that would work out the best for me, but we'll see. That's going to be further down the line, but let's focus on the 11 inch one right now. It's got a new industrial design. It's got this kind of, um, basically flat edge all the way around it, which is really interesting. It's very reminiscent of the iPhone 5 era. It's also the second thinnest product Apple has ever made behind the, I believe it was the sixth, maybe seventh generation iPod Nano. But yeah, no, this thing is thin. It feels really good in the hand, if you guys can kind of see. Um, yeah, I just, I love the colors. I love everything. The antenna line is really weird. This is for the Wi-Fi antenna right here. That's very strange that it's very prominent, but that's okay. It, I, you know, you put it in the keyboard case, you don't ever see it. I, I'm just in love with this thing. Um, uh, speaking of the colors, I got space gray. I was not planning on getting space gray. The one that I originally wanted before everything was announced was gold, but there is no gold option. It's only silver and space gray. So um, I went with space gray. I was really, really had my heart set on a gold one. Um, hopefully one of these years I can get my blue iPad, like a dark blue iPad. I think that'd look really cool. Um, we'll see. Ho hopefully I just think it's really funny that the pro devices, the ones that cost the most amount of money come in the least amount of color options. Screen wise, uh, this is an absolute beautiful screen. It, you, the screen is called liquid retina, but as I found out after the keynote, liquid retina just means it has rounded corners. It doesn't really mean a resolution or a DPI or some sort of specific screen tech. It just means it has rounded, it's an <laughs> LED screen that has rounded corners. So not much to, to that there, but it does look really nice. The next thing up is the A12X chip. This is Apple's custom silicone chip. It is fast. Guys, the Geekbench scores are crazy high. It rivals some modern Macs. I was exporting a 4K LumaFusion project. I started my 12.9 iPad. I started this iPad, and this iPad was blowing it out of the water. It wasn't even close. 
it's it's so crazy fast. It has an eight core CPU. Four of those cores are for low end performance. Four of them are for high end, but it can fire all eight at once. It also has a seven core GPU. Apple says it rivals the Xbox One S, which is a modern console. It's not the highest end of all the consoles, but it is a modern console. That with a quick aside, it may like graphically rival that but it doesn't have the games an Xbox One ha S has. And that's because it doesn't have the same kind of controller. Apple really, if they are serious about making this some sort of like console level gaming experience, they need to make their own controller. That's kind of it. I don't play a ton of games on my iPad, but that's that's my two cents on that. Um, again, just the Geekbench scores. For those that don't know, Geekbench is basically the modern way of how we tell a computer is faster than another. The higher the amount of points, the faster it is. And um, I'll put some B-roll right here of some of the iOS devices of previous past. And then, boom, B-roll of this score. And, yeah, it's crazy fast. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm really curious, like, getting into video editing and stuff like that, like, what it really gives me. I'm going to harp on one more thing, the no headphone jack thing. Um, I really don't get why. From what I've heard is it's because of the liquid retina screen, because of how it's placed in there and how close it is. There just wasn't room for it. But I don't know. That that seems weird. Um, I mean, there's still four speakers. Speaking of the speakers, they are so loud. They are so good. They are leagues above what the previous iPad was. I I'm just and I had the 12.9, which the 12.9 has even bigger speakers. But these and this uh, this new generation of iPad Pro, the tweeter and the subwoofer are separate. So they're just they get this really great crisp sound. And oh man, I love it so much. Uh, USB C. Uh, USB C is a big deal because it's on the iPad. It doesn't do a whole lot for us right now. I end up. I have a feeling this is going to be big with iOS 13. Um, for right now, one of the biggest things that I did, and I actually just did. I was shooting some B-roll for this video. I took this cable right here. It is USB C to Lightning. Plugged one into my iPhone, plugged the other one into this new iPad, and I was just able to import the video footage from my iPhone to my iPad over the cable. Before I was using like AirDrop or waiting for iCloud to sync things over, that was so much quicker. That was that was awesome. I'm really happy about that. Um, like I said, I think iOS 13 is going to bring more options. A lot of people are excited about external display support for the iPad. I, I just want to put out... The previous iPads have that, so if you're not planning on upgrading, you can get the Lightning to HDMI dongle and plug in external displays, and it'll still get the same thing. I think the the new ones might be able to output. I think they output higher resolution to a uh, to an external display, but you could still do it if you have the older iPad if that's something you're interested in. Um, uh, hubs, hubs, and more hubs. I literally have that exact sentence in my notes. I ordered this hub right here. Um, I'm still testing it, so I'm not going to recommend anything right now. Um, I ordered a couple more hubs, so I'm going to do a whole video, kind of like what I did for my USB-A hub video for the or older iPad Pros. Uh, I'm going to test a bunch of these hubs out, and I'm going to let you guys know what works best. What I'm excited about, um, I want some USB-A ports so I can hook up my microphone. That's right here. This guy, uh, my mechanical keyboard. Um, I want to be able to charge stuff off of it. I want to be able to plug this guy because, again, no headphone jack. So I got the USB C to headphone jack adapter. I'm going to be able to plug that in, SD cards, um, HDMI port, things like that. Um, so I'm going to test a few of those. And then once I kind of have a good understanding of what some good ones are, I will make a video about that, I promise. Let's talk about a couple other things. Developers need to update their apps. Uh, both the 11 and the 12.9 have this compatibility mode where it runs in. Best case scenario, you just get this little black bar up top and at bottom. But on some applications, it can be letterbox, so you get these massive black bars on the side. Hopefully apps, especially the apps you guys are using and I'm using, they get updated quickly so we don't have to look at that because it's very ugly. Especially when you get the, the letterbox on the side. It's just cutting into screen real estate at that point. Face ID is fantastic. Honestly, I think Face ID works even better on the iPad than it did on, does on the iPhone. Um, it's sitting down on the desk and looking up at you. That's usually when my iPhone fails. This iPad hasn't failed on me once. Uh, something cool you guys can do is if you double tap the space bar uh, while the screen is completely off, it'll wake it up, trigger Face ID, and then unlock your iPad. That's pretty cool. I, I really like that. Overall, I've had this thing for about four hours so far. So this is very much my very rough 
first impressions. Um, but going from the 12, nine to 11 is a bigger jump than what I thought it would be. Um, I'm still pretty happy that I picked the 11 just because I wanted to try something new. I have a feeling a lot of you guys are getting the 11 inch if you are getting a new iPad pro. Um, so I just kind of wanted to see what that was like before I go back to the 12, nine, or even if I go back to the 12, nine, I like it a lot. i still get plenty of my stuff done. I still think the biggest issue with the 12, nine iPad is that apps aren't taking advantage of that screen real estate. No app really ever felt like it was like worthy of just being up there. It always felt like like you needed to put apps side by side for them, you know, for the screen real estate to really be taken advantage of. Let's talk a little bit about the keyboard. It's a redesigned smart keyboard. Um, now covers the back and front. There's no more like or weird origami thing to unfold it. It's literally like a book where you just open it and then slot, put the iPad in there. Um, the iPad doesn't you can't prop it up without having the keyboard out anymore. Like you used to be able to fold the, uh, the keyboard case back on the old iPad pros. There's two viewing angles on this one. And I, and I can't speak to the 12, nine, but this is for the 11. Um, there's the normal viewing angle that is very traditional to the uh, original smart keyboard. Then there's this new one. That's a little bit further back. And on the 11 inch, it's basically like a right angle. It's, it's not, it's slightly under that, but I'm not being dramatic at all when I say it's, it's basically a right angle. The keyboard is small, much smaller on the 11 than it is on the 12, nine, but it is surprisingly incredibly usable. It took me a little bit, probably took me about 20 minutes to get used to, but now I seem fine on it. And I'm able to, you know, just type away on it. Like I said, I didn't get my Apple pencil today. I'm not sure where it is. Um, hopefully it shows up soon. Uh, when it does, I have a really special video specific for the Apple Pencil planned. Um, I actually have a lot of videos planned for around this iPad Pro. Um, I'm not going to forsake any shortcuts content or app content. So if you're interested, if you're watching for that, that's still coming, I promise. Um, but a lot of the reviews, a lot of people complained about reviews this time around because Apple gave the iPad review units to a lot of people that don't work off the iPad. Uh, and a lot of it was, hey, yeah, you can't get real work on the iPad. That was that was their conclusion. So I'm going to kind of do something a little different. And I think my hopefully my review is well received. I hope you guys like it. Um, that's going to be coming later. I want to spend some more time with the device, really kind of flush out my thoughts on it. This is very much a rough draft of my thoughts and very just kind of like some quick, quick thoughts, you know, about four hours after getting the device. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.